Have you ever wondered what lies beyond our solar system? Well, meet Voyager 1, a spacecraft that has been exploring the vast depths of space since 1977. Voyager 1 has traveled over 14 billion miles from Earth and is now the farthest man-made object from our planet. This intrepid explorer has captured stunning images of Jupiter, Saturn, and their moons, revealing the breathtaking beauty of our neighboring planets. Equipped with a golden record containing sounds and images of Earth, Voyager 1 is a message in a bottle, carrying a piece of our humanity across the cosmic seas. As Voyager 1 continues its journey, it carries with it the hopes and dreams of generations, inspiring us to boldly go where no one has gone before. As new theories are put forth and previously accepted truths are disproved, our understanding of the cosmos expands. However, we now have more conclusive ways of understanding the cosmos because of space missions like Voyager, which stretch our horizon into the unknown abyss. When a large space mission like Voyager sends back data revealing new discoveries, everything is different. So let's examine the specifics and learn what Voyager 1 has learned. So what are the strange transmissions from Voyager 1 originating from the furthest reaches of space? Is there a cause for concern or not? You will get to know this and plenty more as we dive into the details of today's show. However, before getting started with the video officially, here's a quick reminder that you can subscribe for free and like the video so that we can boost the algorithm. Comments are most welcomed. The Start of an Era Since the Soviet Union had only launched Sputnik 1, the first artificial satellite eight years prior, 1965 is considered the start of the modern age of space exploration. The task of coming up with the most effective technique to launch a space mission to Jupiter, or perhaps even out to Saturn, Uranus, or Neptune fell to Flandro, a part-time employee at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California. He plotted the orbital paths of those massive planets using a pencil, the chosen accurate tool of 20th century engineers, and made the startling discovery that in the late 1970s and early 1980s, all four will be strung together in a long arc like Earth-like pearls on a necklace. This coincidence might cause the spacecraft to speed up, gaining speed from the gravitational pull of each massive planet it passed. The probe would seem to be being pulled along by an invisible rope, but it would suddenly shatter, sending the probe shooting off on its course. The regular gravity support, according to Flandro, will shorten the distance between Earth and Neptune's orbit from 30 to 12 years. There was a drawback despite the alignment only taking place once every 176 years. A spaceship that would need to be launched by the middle of the 1970s in order to reach the planets while the lineup was still in effect. Voyagers 1 and 2 were consequently constructed. Expedition Both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 left Earth in 1977. They weren't the first spacecraft to reach the nearest of the big planets. That honor prolonged to Pioneers 10 and 11. Being more developed than the Pioneers, the Voyagers made several astounding discoveries. Voyager 1, which arrived at Jupiter sooner and covered less distance than Voyager 2, discovered that the lovely moon Io has volcanic volcanoes. When Voyager 1 reached Saturn in 1980 to examine the intricate details of the rings, it encountered the first nitrogen atmosphere discovered outside of Earth near Titan. A more beautiful route was taken by Voyager 2, which made stops at Jupiter and Saturn in 1979 and 1981 respectively before passing past Uranus and Neptune in 1986 and 1989. The spaceship then started to move in the direction of other stars. The beginning of the interstellar medium is where, according to scientists, the solar wind, the sun's discharge of charged particles comes to a stop. This ionized gas or plasma pushes against the colder, denser galactic plasma streaming around it, much like a stone impeding a stream. The names heliosphere and heliopause are used to describe the hole created by the sun in a manner similar to how tropopause is used to describe the top of the troposphere on Earth. At the time Voyager was launched, he really didn't know how far out the heliopause was, according to Don Gurnett, a Voyager researcher at the University of Iowa in Iowa City. The heliopause had been suggested to be five times closer to Jupiter or perhaps Earth than it is to the Sun. At a distance of 121.6 astronomical units, or nearly four times the distance of Neptune, Voyager 1 finally achieved this objective on August 25, 2012, as Gurnett had predicted 20 years earlier. However, there was such a contentious discussion surrounding the crossing that it took NASA an additional 13 months to deem it a success. Voyager 1 did, however, discover some proof that it had passed the heliopause. The high-energy solar wind particles disappeared, suggesting that the rest of the solar wind was likewise left behind. Additionally, when Voyager flew past, 
The heliosphere's partial deflection of the cosmic rays from outside the solar system intensified. There were two problems. Due to a malfunction in Voyager 1's plasma instrument, the spacecraft was unable to record the rise in particle density that occurred when it had departed the heliosphere and entered interstellar space. Second, contrary to what was anticipated, the magnetic field outside the heliosphere did not point in a different direction. Krimagus asserted that because nature hadn't read the theorist's papers, it simply wasn't aware that the magnetic field direction was intended to be changed. It is still unknown why the magnetic fields within and without the heliosphere align. The Sun contributed to Voyager's success. Voyager 1 was surprised by solar storms that had earlier erupted as they raced through plasma, forcing electrons to vibrate and generate radio waves that the spacecraft recorded. It was discovered by measuring the frequency of these radio waves that Voyager had actually entered a zone that was significantly denser. A New Realm Both spacecraft entered a new domain during the previous decade when they pierced the interstellar medium, the flimsy material that covers the enormous distance between the stars. The spaceship regularly picks up new information there. Researchers have been startled by the strength and direction of the interstellar magnetic field, and the new information has even caused a disagreement over the nature and activity of the heliosphere, the Sun's magnetic field. Is the heliosphere a comet-shaped structure, as has long been assumed, or is it more spherical? And is it more consistent in size, or does it vary with the number of sunspots? The spacecraft has revealed some enticing information. The idea that heliopause varies is not brand new. Over the last 10 years, researchers have looked at data from a variety of sources to understand its dynamic nature. This boundary's location and behavior have been improved with the aid of NASA's interstellar boundary explorer IBEX spacecraft which tracks energetic neutral atom emissions. The only spacecraft to leave the heliosphere was Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. At a specific location in space and time, the Voyager probe only transmitted direct observations. IBEX completes its statistics by supplying additional context. Using this information, researchers have built models that predict how their heliopause may alter in the future. The heliopause is a border that is continually shifting. In contrast to the solar winds and interstellar medium, which push and pull against one another. Data from more recent heliopause studies, however, contradicts past findings. The IBAC satellite, for instance, found that the 2014 brightening of energetic neutral atoms ENAs, which at first suggested asymmetry in the heliopause over a period of months, was incompatible with the models as they are now formulated. According to data from the Voyager 1 and 2 spacecraft, the heliopause appears to have changed considerably in a short period of time which may help explain the enormous time difference between the entry of the two probes into interstellar space in 2012 and 2018, respectively. However, as heliopause shifts, theories put forth to explain its stability are called into question. An article published on October 10th summarized the investigation's findings. They thought these differences intriguing, perhaps even provoking. Scientists anticipate that NASA's interstellar mapping and acceleration probe a new and improved satellite scheduled to launch in 2025 and capable of detecting ENAs would aid in their understanding of the heliopause. What is causing the heliopause's unexpected behavior is currently unknown. In May of this year, the Attitude Articulation and Control System AACS, on board Voyager 1 began transmitting scrambled data instead of regular updates on the state and health of the spacecraft. The AACS continuously points the high-gain antenna at Earth. This behavior is comparable to electronic aphasia which impairs the ability to understand speech. Another intriguing study that needs more information to be fully understood. The data might not precisely reflect the spacecraft's current state or weren't chosen with care. Although NASA had at the time said that the AACS may have been in an aberrant state, the engineers were perplexed by the fact that updates from the spacecraft Voyager 1 appeared to be in fine shape, despite the strange circumstances, indicating that the antenna was still pointed toward Earth and not where the AACS said it was. The ship's radio communications were still strong and reliable. The science equipment on Voyager 1 is still gathering and transmitting data despite the AACS's odd behavior. Whatever the AACS's issue, it did not cause a fault prevention mechanism to be engaged which would have put the spacecraft into safe mode in the event of a breakdown. Fortunately, NASA experts were able to identify and resolve the problem. It was discovered that the AACS had begun broadcasting its telemetry data and onboard computer and had long since failed resulting in the data being jumbled after the command to the AACS was transmitted. The next challenging job will be identifying the underlying reason for the AACS's selection of switching systems. NASA makes the assumption that this system may have received the incorrect instruction from another onboard computer. 
Although it is believed that Voyager 1's health is not in immediate danger, the underlying cause of this issue needs to be found and fixed in order to allay the following concerns. Voyager 1 has been traveling through interstellar space for the past 10 years, leaving behind the magnetic field of the Sun that once shielded it from cosmic rays and other forms of interstellar radiation. Much like how the magnetic field of the Earth protects us from solar radiation and high-energy particles. Without this defense, it's possible that high-speed energetic particles are causing memory issues in Voyager 1's onboard computer circuits. Despite these difficulties, the Voyager 1 mission is still in use more than 45 years after it was constructed. This has brought us to the conclusion of this epic journey. When do you think Voyager 2 will leave the solar system exactly? Do let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up. It will help us understand our audience and allow YouTube to suggest similar videos. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you at the next one. one.